Hello, and welcome to season two of the Yukon Entrepreneur podcast series, a series all about how Yukon businesses are adapting during the COVID-19 pandemic. I'm Carrie Johnston, your host, and I'm calling in today from the traditional territory of Champagne and Ajac First Nations, and I'm joined today by Laura. Laura, please introduce yourself. Hello, um, I'm Laura Daly, uh, owner, operator of Cultured Fine Cheese in Whitehorse, Yukon, and uh, I'm both happy and nervous to be here. <laughs> Well, thanks so much for calling in today, Laura. And you're joining us from Kwanlin, Whitehorse, in the traditional territory of Kwanlin on First Nation and to On Kitchen Council. Yes. Awesome. Okay. So tell us a little bit about your business. What is it that you do? Um, so uh, Cultured Fine Cheese basically started as a small uh, a cheese kiosk where it's um, kind of custom cut to measure wrapped on the spot. Um, Back in the day when we were doing samples, people would be trying the cheese before buying it, trying to trying to bring something new to the territory, but uh, starting small because of the you know the, the fear of going in too big um, uh, for for starting out, and it uh, has kind of naturally evolved after seven years now into something a little bit bigger, but still quite modest in size. Um, but it's allowed us to expand beyond cheese into specialty oils and vinegars all the lovely fixings to go with cheese, crackers, olives, preserves, sweets. Basically, we're in the business of making people happy <laughs> through food. Um, but uh, yes, yeah, so uh, it's um, specialty food retail. And who's your customer? Do you, is it mostly Yukoners? Are you serving tourists, that sort of thing? Or is it, is it really local? Um, it's like, it's largely local and certainly like over the last two years, um, you know, minus this summer, um, I, you know, all local really, um, I'd kind of forgotten what tourism might actually inject into the business. Cause I think 2019 was our last summer with tourism and, and now having had a, another summer where people are visiting again, um, it's hard to know. I think I, like, I think it's grown, um, for sure, I guess the business has just grown since then, but uh, tourism did give us a, a really nice injection, especially realizing that kind of our bread and butter base customers are the locals and a lot of them are traveling this summer. So I wasn't quite sure what to expect. And so it, it has been a really good healthy infusion from um, the tourism uh uh, sector definitely but I mean in those quiet months you know that get you through the rest of the year and and not quiet months like December um, it's our locals like it's it's so much fun because almost every customer that comes through the door I generally know by name and or you know if they come through the door more than once I try to make a point of getting to know them by name and uh, so we have yeah really um, great long-standing relationships with the locals but uh, it's been it's been fun getting you know new faces uh from different places through the door again too. I really, I, I think I'll, when, when I think about your business, I think about that personal relationship that like the, 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 like the boutique cheeses that you're bringing in for people because you know that they're gonna love them. So what have you learned about your customers and that relationship over the last couple of years? Oh my gosh. Um, like I, I've always said it, we have such incredible customers and, and you know, like there is more, uh, more than the connection through cheese. Like I always say, cheese is my, my medium with which I get to connect with the community. Um, and that's become a huge part of the business, like in the heart of the business for me. So I, I, you know, I think had we started the business just right before the pandemic, um, it would have been, I don't know if we would have survived, but we'd had so many years of establishing these relationships, building this trust and our customers, um, they would basically, you know, when we had to kind of resort to other means of keeping business going um there there was no doubt or question in their mind they were just oh I trust whatever you do oh yeah just put something together oh it's good you know what I like so all those things were really established so I just I have to say it sounds cheesy um <laughs> it's in my nature but I I think you know I just really felt so much local love and support um throughout the pandemic like people really took it upon themselves as like to it was, it was their role, you know, to, to keep these businesses going us and, and many others to just really want to see us survive that time. So I think, yeah, it just really reiterated just how, um, how incredibly supportive the community is, um, you know, certainly for, for our business, but, you know, connecting with other local businesses on that too. And 
people people would have to go a long way to uh, <laughs> to find these other shops if they didn't exist after the pandemic, you know. So I think yeah, people really took it upon themselves to do their part, and a lot of a lot of local pride there that people have for what's been created here. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. What was your first memory of the pandemic when you realized that this was going to be like a really big thing? Oh, well, I think maybe there was a bit of denial leading up to it because we had a, a spring break trip to Vancouver Island uh, booked. And, and I feel like the day before we left, even I was still hugging every customer, like regular customer coming through the door. And we're, you know, I was kind of getting a sense. I'm like, should we do this trip? And so many people were like, oh, you deserve a break. Oh, go for it. So I think maybe a lot of us weren't realizing how big this was going to be. And uh, it was probably like day two on our trip down to Vancouver Island. Things had probably hit a little bit more there already. So that whole realization like, oh, the grocery store is empty. Good thing we packed our own cheese. And oh my goodness, just that sense of, you know, impending change. And uh, yeah, by like day two, we were rearranging flights, trying to get back to the Yukon, just realizing like things were changing dramatically, like from the Saturday we left to the Sunday night, there was, um, I think like public health announcement or whatnot, and just really kind of rewired where we were going and decided, time to get back and be there for this. And uh, so, yeah, we, we cut the vacation short, came back and it was a mixture of, um, there's a lot of anxiety. There's a lot of like kicking into high gear of like, okay, we just got to do what we got to do and figure things out. Um, so yeah, just kind of getting thrust into it, but it was definitely, I think some of the, the early feelings were also just, will we survive this? Like, how you know it, are we going to make it um so that fear of uh not getting through um i'm kind of a worst case scenario brain sometimes too so you go to like the, the like yeah the worst point that things can get to and then i start to backtrack and and get myself in gear again but uh yeah it was it was scary yeah and so, yeah. were you just in the midst of kind of like an expansion when the pandemic first hit like you had some new fridges coming or there was something else that was kind of happening then too hey oh good memory uh it was just uh it was it was um 2018 when we had moved into the new space just at the end of 2018 and uh so lots of new fridges were already in place and all of that stuff but I think we, we were always adding fridges <laughs> like it's just one of those things my husband's always like okay if we have to have a new fridge for Christmas can we just get it before Christmas and not in December <laughs> but I think I can't fit another fridge in there um, but no, I, I, timing wise, yeah, by March, 2020, we were like very stable in that new location, which was another great thing too. Um, but yeah, there's so many factors of luck involved too, you know, um, mm -hmm. it's not all smart decisions. It's timing and <laughs> luck and all of that. Too. <laughs> which, which of the public health me measures did you find the most feeling safe by the measures that were in place, I have to say so, but, but, but reinforcing them, um, you know, had its, had its challenges. And I know for some businesses more than others, we are a very narrow space in there. Um, like I think the two meter distancing, just having people pass display wall, um, to properly honor that. Um, so, I mean, Again, like most most of our customers were regulars and really just got it and supported that. So we we didn't have a ton of difficulties. Like the masking part too, like people, for the most part, people were really, really good about it. And I mean, we, we are still wearing masks as we're dealing with the food and we're dealing with tons of people coming through every day. And I just feel like that's, that's where we're at right now. But you'll see people... Um, even still our regular customers. And, you know, we have that little sanitizing station, a little sign at the front there and they just stop and, and they wait, you know, and I'm like, Oh no, you, you can come in. It's not two at a time. Like the sign used to say, you know, and then you'll see them like reaching in, trying to get a mask or something I'm like, no, you don't have to wear a mask. It's okay. So, I mean, for the most part, people were really good at just accepting that and not, you know, taking it out on us personally. Um, there were just, you know, a few, a few, um, rare, um, situations where, where it was, you know, uncomfortable to have to address it. But, uh, mm -hmm. but I think, yeah, we were, we were pretty fortunate again, and that we have like really good, strong relationships with our customers and didn't, I don't think any of them, even if they 
didn't love the, um, you know, the pieces that were in place, they, they uh, respected us uh, enough to just do, do what you had to do. Right. So, mm -hmm. yeah. And realize it's not easy being on the other side of that too. So, yeah. Um, we've all kind of had to adapt in some way, which adaptation in your business have you been most proud of? Oh, I mean, one of the things that uh, like we had to do pretty, pretty quick, because um, again, we had no idea where things were going and, um, and, you know, quite nervous and, and wanted to make sure my staff felt safe. We, uh, we weren't mandated to close at any point during that, but we decided to just go to online and, you know, curbside um, or, you know, pick up at the gate or whatnot. So it kind of changing everything that we had established as a really like come in and connect with us face to face, like really interactive to a whole online system with my, you know, thrown together makeshift good enough to get us through website. Um, so I was like pretty proud at how quickly we got that together. And I think it's just, it's survival, right? Like you just, you do what you have to do to figure out how to make it through. Um, so, so that definitely, um, I felt proud of that accomplishment, but I think the pride came in a different way after that. When I worried that in this attempt to survive, we actually shot ourselves in the foot and everybody would just want to order cheese online and keep it simple and you know send an email and just, you know, cut and paste from the website, pick it up. And I thought, oh God. I'm not going to have any joy in what I do if that's what my new business model is. I'm like, I'm not able to do it. I need people. I need face to face. Um, I need that interaction for the the joy in my day to day. And so I I thought, oh God, here we go. This is this is what people will want. And as soon as we kind of started to go back to welcoming people in gradually, like gate opening a little more, a couple hours a day, four hours a day, people just wanted to come in and they wanted to engage the way we had before. And so I think that like that sense of pride was like. Oh, the business model we created in the beginning was really what people responded to and, and what I loved most. And so just, it was so natural for people to return to that, even if it was that they had to wait outside in the lineup, you know, because it was two at a time. Um, so yeah, that, that I think, and, and also just um, perfectionism can get you far in life and it can also just totally destroy you. <laughs> so a certain degree of that, you know, mixed in in the early stages of the business, I think were critical to getting us where, where we needed to get to, but you can burn yourself out pretty badly. And I definitely did that, um, really badly in 2018. And so one of the things I think I developed this new mantra <laughs> during COVID was it's good enough. It's good enough. And it wasn't that I was cutting corners. It's just that I wouldn't, you know, just ruin myself over the most minute little detail, just having to be exact, you know, like the, the food safety, all of that stuff. I mean, that, that was like, no, that's gotta be like on spot on, but so many other things where I could just let go of, Oh my God, I had a typo on the website for a week, whatever <laughs> people can, people can make it, you know, make it out what I meant to say, or, you know, just, I guess being more, um, yeah, accepting uh, of, of, of humanness and, and imperfection. And so that was, that was a big step for me, for sure. Coming, coming to that place. Yeah, that's great. Have you learned anything else about your business model over the last couple of years? Um, well, I think like what I touched on earlier, definitely that, um, the business model that I created, uh, definitely works. Um, it, it's what people respond best to the way in which I would want to operate the shop. So that was really like a nice, um, way to reaffirm that. Um, yeah, it's that, that's the biggest one, I guess, is that, um, I think the way we're doing things works, you know, um, there's always things you can tweak and change and expand and whatnot, but I think we're in a, we're just in a good little place to remain right now. So. Yeah. You're a brick and mortar shop and you survived. <laughs> <laughs> Did you access any of the pandemic related supports like Yukon's, you know, um, business relief expenses or any of those things? Uh, yeah, so we did, um, we had applied to Canor for some funding and then uh, we got uh, basically connected over to the Pivot uh, program um, from them. So we did uh, get some nice, you know, professional photos for the website, um, some website assistance. Um, and uh, so that, and then we did definitely take advantage of um, like the reimbursement for, uh, you know, periods of, of leave for either exposure to COVID or COVID itself. Um, 
So, I mean, that was definitely, definitely helpful. Um, we, yeah, we also had, I think early on, like with the uh, remittances and stuff like that, there was like a 10% or something that was uh, like through the federal um, government um, that we were uh, relieved of basically. But we were like, again, we were pretty lucky because although we took a big dip initially, we, you know, once we got the online thing set up and everything, we started to, you know, kind of get back up to um, reasonable numbers that we didn't, mm -hmm have to access as much um support as as you know uh, other you know people did and you know although we knew it was out there grateful <laughs> for that <laughs> mostly more grateful that we didn't have to um mm -hmm. yeah. yeah and were there any gaps in the funding or, or was sort of what you needed there for you I think for in, in our case um yeah what we needed was was definitely there for us but uh yeah I'm, I'm sure other you know people in business could speak to yeah like I, I definitely know some yeah other neighbors or whatnot that found major gaps that, that impacted them so mm -hmm. and going forward how are you thinking about your business differently oh you know, it's, it's interesting. It's, I, I think I'm, I'm taking a bit of a, a pause to see, like we'd had, you know, five years pre pandemic to develop a bit of a pattern in business, to be able to plan for, um, you know, orders and stuff accordingly for when we might have surges and when we'd have lulls and staffing and everything. So now kind of coming into this new normal and still, you know, obviously um, COVID's out there and we are just living with it differently taking some time to just see if there are new patterns now that we have to pay attention to, you know, if, if there are, you know, if the lulls are going to be um, longer, um, you know, if it, like, again, summer tourism season, I had no idea what to expect. So just kind of, um, yeah, wanting, wanting to see what happens over the next couple of years to see if there's a, a pattern emerging, if it's similar to what we had before. Um, so yeah, a little bit of a holding point, I guess. <laughs> and I, I've gone off track, but I got to look at the question again. But <laughs> yeah. And oh, also, just yeah, just go ahead. Oh, uh, also trying to. I think a lot of people um, during the pandemic like just reevaluated so many things in their lives, and uh, so really, I'm I'm kind of back on that track again about trying to find balance. Um, it was really hard at the beginning of the pandemic. It felt like. I was trying to homeschool my son. I was trying to figure out how to put my business online and just how to deal with all these things. And it was all consuming and overwhelming and taxing. And so there's a little bit of that debt that has to be repaid as well in, in the sense, like emotionally, mentally, physically. <laughs> so trying to, uh, yeah, right now, take the opportunities for that balance, take more time for family, um, really, try to be okay with that the business is where it is right now and maybe I don't need to throw my all and everything into thinking of the next big thing or expansion or anything like that but just appreciate where we are and and uh yeah have a bit more time that's a I mean that's an interesting segue to the next question is which is like are you positioned like how might you position yourself better for you know the economy to come are you picking up any new skills or is that new skill learning how to say no? <laughs> yeah, you know, that's a, that's a really hard one for me, um, you know, and also another thing that came up recently too uh, with friends of mine, um, we were talking about how trying to never apologize in an email. Don't start your email with I'm sorry or I apologize for just be OK with the fact that, you know, you are saying no or turning down an opportunity. Yeah, struggled with for a long time for sure saying no like in the beginning you feel like you can't say no to a single opportunity because you're trying to grow and and develop and but uh yeah um like where am i <laughs> sorry maybe i should sip some more coffee and get my brain engaged yeah, no, you're doing great. And, and I mean, the next question is sort of similar too, but is, you know, what have you learned about leadership when, when you're leading employees, leading a business? What have you learned about your leadership qualities over the last little while? Um, yeah, I think I try to like everything I do, I try to kind of lead with my heart. Again, it might sound a bit cheesy, but um, I really have to like check in and see how things feel. I, you know, and, and I'll know there's like a little, block or something just doesn't flow if I'm not following that path but uh 
I, I, I think leadership is also sharing that leadership with your key players. Being, being that employee for so many years and, and, you know, retail jobs thinking, oh my God, it's never going to amount to anything. All I do is retail. Where's that going to, you know, translate to anything down the road. Um, I think about the things that, you know, would have made me feel more valued or appreciated in those positions. Um, and the things that people did apply that did make me stay in certain positions longer, um, and, and kind of tap into all those things to, uh, try to really make my team feel, valued because I mean, I, I, I think almost every day I say it, I'm like, I couldn't do it without you. <laughs> like, and every day that I don't come in, cause I'm spending some time with my family or I'm taking a day to get a few things caught up on the home front, both for work or personal, you know, it's, it's to remind them, like, I, I wouldn't have any of that freedom without them. It's not, it's not a one woman show. I can't run that business alone. And, uh, and you know, it's, yeah, I think that's that's a, a big part of it, but also just giving like that um, that extra responsibility to them, like knowing like something new that I did during the pandemic that I never did before was go on a trip where I was basically unreachable and would have no way to turn around and get back quickly, like being out in the wilderness for a week. And uh, and I think as it freed me in so many ways, but it also empowered my team because, you know, they just, I trust them and they, I know that they're going to do what they need to do. And it's like strange times because of the pandemic too, but, you know, trust their judgment calls during that time. And so, yeah, I feel I must be doing something right because like I've had employees for a long time, <laughs> you know, but uh, so, yeah, I guess uh, again, just, and also just being open to, to learning from them that's, that's huge, you know, like listening to them, what ideas they have and hearing them out. And I mean, the business is shaped, uh, not just by me, but, but by all of us and how we all work together. Mm -hmm. Are there uh, sort of, as we, as we do the work of rebuilding Yukon's economy coming out of, you know, the pandemic and into this new normal where COVID's just part of our lives, are, is there anything that you're paying attention to in the economy? I mean, some people have mentioned things like labor, you know, shortage of labor or that sort of thing. I mean, you just said you have lots of, you know, long-term staff, but, but are, are there things that, you know, you're paying attention to that are a concern or that you're, you're hopeful for? So yeah, definitely the staffing point. I, I would say I have long-term staff, but I couldn't necessarily say lots, <laughs> have, you know, two, two really long-termers, which is fantastic. Um, and another part-timer that joined us uh, in the spring and everything, but, uh, but it is, it would be ideal to have one other person and it, it hasn't been easy. I mean, I'm definitely particular. We want a certain person that's going to really fit with us. Um, but like in order to get people to, you have to be much more competitive. Everybody's in a position of looking right now. And, you know, um, so, so pay benefits, all these other factors that play in, um, you know, perks of cheese and all that sort of stuff, like trying, <laughs> trying to figure out what, what is sustainable for us to bring somebody in. And, and that's, that's a difficult one. Cause you know, like it takes quite a few people to, to deliver the level of customer service that we want, um, at that shop. And so, you know, in a perfect day, it's like three to four people working, but we might not always have the business on that day that <laughs> properly supports having everybody paid. So, you know, you kind of look at, well, obviously they get paid, but you have to look at it in the bigger scale of in the week, do we do enough that everybody can, you know, we can sustain everybody at this wage, uh, to be on, um, the hours that they are. And so we're right now exploring that, that balance of how much can we pay? Because I mean, you bring somebody in at a wage, I have to make sure there's enough separation from my long-termers that have been in, right? So bumping them up enough that you can bring somebody in at something higher and you, uh, you don't feel like they're right on the heels of the people that have put two years or, or six years into it, right? So it's, it's a tricky one, um, but I, I have to, yeah. Um, Staffing, staffing, I think is, is the biggest thing because without, like without the team, I can't have that, you know, balance or freedom that I'm seeking now. I can't offer the customer service level that I want. Um, I have a lot more take home computer time at home and, and not with my family. Um, but it is like, I, I, I just posted something recently and it's nice because I've had some feedback right away from interested um, people, but prior to that job postings might be sitting out there on you win for ages and you get like the odd, odd local resume, few and far between, lots from overseas, people looking for opportunities, which would be um, 
you know, I'd, I'd love the idea of, through my business at some point, I can help somebody become a, you know, permanent resident of Canada. That would be amazing. But I can't bring somebody over from overseas to start that. They have to kind of be here already because um, it is a big risk and, and expense and everything too. So, but I think that that's the biggest thing. And I mean, the obviously, uh, yeah, inflation and stuff is one of those things too that watching very closely because food can, you know, really good cheese and stuff can feel like a bit of a luxury item. So just, yeah, moving, moving ahead cautiously, but I'm looking at my December schedule and, uh, you know, I have all these columns where I just have question marks where there would normally be names and hours, you know, uh, going, Oh, Oh yeah. <laughs> a few gaps there. <laughs> I'm like just waiting for my son to be old enough to be able to exploit him for the Christmas season. <laughs> oh gosh. Yeah, that um, I'm laughing at it now, but it, it it can be a big one. Like if if I lost one of my full timers, like I don't even. Yeah, it takes it takes so long to get that experience too, and and to get the right person. That uh, yeah, it's 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 stressful, and everybody's in that. Like everybody's in that position right now, be it like entry level retail to government even and schools, and so yes, staffing. <laughs> any any advice for emerging entrepreneurs? Oh, I made a little note about that. Oh, <laughs> um, yeah. Wow. Um, it's funny. I <laughs> so many stages looking at my business where I'm like, at certain points, I'd be like, I would never do it again. And then you get to the next <laughs> one, you're like, oh my god, how could I have you know done anything else? Um, it's it's such a roller coaster. Um, I think one of the biggest things is you have to be really excited by what it is you want to do. If, if you're not, I don't know where you're going to get the drive and determination to, to persevere. Um, I was definitely excited about food and cheese and all that stuff. It's always been something, um, you know, like any of my friends looking back when, uh, when they say, Oh, it makes so much sense that this is what you're doing. I'm like, really? And they're like, Oh yeah. Like, remember when you would host all those dinners and you would do all this and it'd be like, 10 different, you know, trays of this. And I'm like, right. Oh yeah. It has always been integral, <laughs> but I think, yeah, something, something that you love is definitely something you're going to be able to pour so much more of your energy into. Um, but yeah. Um, but be, be prepared for extremely long hours, <laughs> be good about, you know, the boundaries. I, I feel like as much advice as you can give somebody and, and people offered me tons as well. Um, you almost, at least this is the way I am it's great. You hear it, you know, you pay attention to that, but it's like, we often learn from experience and from doing. And so you kind of have to go out there and just be prepared to make your own mistakes and know that that's going to be part of it and learn from that, you know, assess, move forward. Um, yeah. I, I just hope that most people, even though I think it's very unlikely um, that, that they can do their best to avoid burnout because that is such a real, real part of it. And <laughs> it teaches, but at the same time, like it teaches you so much because for me, like what we talked about earlier about practicing, you know, being better about saying no, uh, you know, establishing those boundaries. I think had I not completely burnt out, I might not have learned that lesson um, and been able to apply it. Uh, so, so yeah, I guess just uh, <laughs> buckle up and be ready for the ride. <laughs> but, but do it. I mean, the, there are so many amazing things that, uh, that the sense of pride in creating your own employment and employment for others. Like, I mean, that just blows my mind still that, that, you know, these opportunities that can be provided through, through the business. So, yeah. yeah. Any shifts in your worldview aha moments? Yeah, that one, I, you know, I was trying to think, I feel like that deserves like this big profound answer. And that was the one where I'm like, hmm, <laughs> I might need to think on that a bit more. Um, yeah, I, I, I mean, it's, I don't know if that's really like an aha moment. Um, I don't know if it quite fits, fits the question, but uh, I think through the last couple of years, we've, um, we've seen how strongly uh, opinions can, can divide um, people and, uh, you know, where, where those opinions are at the heart of who they are. And, and so I'm such a peacekeeper and, uh, you know, it's, it's, yeah, it can be challenging, um, and, and hard, uh, you know, in the heart emotionally to, to see, um, that divide. Um, so I think just, again, just practicing patience and, um, empathy, 
and awareness that we all come from different places that form our different opinions and uh, try to, uh, yeah, just, I guess, you know, just give more time and appreciation to understand where, where people's opinions are formed and not, um, not judge, um, you know, uh, without all the, not judge, I guess, you know, you just don't have all the information, you, you know, it's, that's, that's, that's a big one, a big reminder um, for me. Mm -hmm. What's been your wellness practice? What's been keeping you grounded through all this? <laughs> um, running, <laughs> definitely. Uh, yeah, I, I, as much as the job is fairly physical, I'm on my feet all day. I, I have this amazing crew, my, my, I call them my Riverdale run crew. And it's a group of friends and uh, women that I have known um, for years and have gotten to know even better through the last couple of really intense, stressful years. And we just go out there and we sweat it out on the trails. And, uh, you know, sometimes we stop for a good cry. Sometimes we're <laughs> laughing so hard we have to stop. Um, so that's, that's like integral uh, to my well-being, um, my running and my time. Like it's it's my social life basically. I always say my social life exists in the store with my customers and my run group. I don't, I'm not a super social person outside of that. You know, I might have like, you know, little one-on-one -on -one walk here or there or a little, you know, dinner with close friends, but uh that and then hugely my family. Um just having that time with my family, having time outdoors with my family, being active with my family, be it skiing, backpacking, um canoeing uh any of those things together with my boys uh is is also just um so so important to kind of keep me emotionally stable and feeling more connected more resilient um and then quiet time <laughs> when i have my work from home days and i like there's a lot of work that's happening too but it's happening in my pajamas uh <laughs> with that extra cup of coffee <laughs> and i have like i don't even have music on it's just silence like I can hear the little creaking you know uh you know character sounds of my house and that's it like otherwise I just have to have those uh recharge times because I mean it's full on at the shop and I love engaging and I love that time um you know socializing but then I have to counter that with like completely like retreatful quiet time too so yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. any final thoughts before we close out today wasn't as bad as I thought it was going to be <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> um I don't uh yeah, I, I I think I've covered most of it. Um yeah. Yeah. Well, yeah. thank you so much. You did a great yeah. job. I and mean, you don't interview that often, I know in your role and so it's it's great to kind of capture your moment in time and what you experienced being brick and mortar during the pandemic. Yeah, thank you for your time too. I know you've been putting a ton of work into this. Is yeah, that's uh, and and thank you for putting up with me dancing around the date so many times. <laughs> oh. oh well, I mean, it was there's there has been you know a pretty long period of time there. So we went through the Omicron wave where I'd book people and then they'd say, you know what, I got COVID, I can't, right? And and that was just consistent month over month over month as it continued to kind of roll through roll through That's our right. community and then you know just my own experience with COVID recovering over the summer here so yeah you know just it's just part of our new normal this sort of rolling wave of COVID and and how that will lead to capacity restraint and you know the need to reschedule things as we just keep each other healthy and safe yeah no it's so true actually you saying that um I think I did actually commit to a time early on there to, have to cancel yeah. because of COVID yeah yeah, yeah about that I hadn't forgotten about COVID but I just forgot about what things I had to cancel because of it. oh I think I had like seven interviews in like fairly like within like succession that it where it just happened I was like gosh don't book an interview with me right now oh my god but, no it didn't seem like there was such a I mean probably you noticed that because of your appointments being canceled but also just like talking to people coming into the shop um you know it's realizing like it was just so rampant um because you know i wouldn't see customers for a couple of weeks they're like oh this is why or you call somebody about something that you'd ordered in for them and they're like i'm at home right now <laughs> and having that realization of of wow it really felt like it was yeah kind of far reaching and everywhere this year so yeah 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 thanks so much right. for your time and hey, Carrie, you have a great rest you. of your day bye thank you bye-bye <laughs>